The man who was accused of opening fire and killing five of his neighbors is still on the run. Police say have, they have a, they're on the trail. They're trying to find him, but so far it has run cold. There's an $80,000 reward, though, that is being offered to help track down 38-year-old Francisco Oropesa, who the shooting happened on Friday night in the city of Cleveland, Texas. It's about an hour north of Houston. According to the sheriff's office there, Oropesa had been drinking and was shooting a rifle in his yard when his neighbors asked him to stop because a baby was trying to sleep. The sheriff says that the suspect then went to the neighbor's house where he shot the victims. Everybody that was shot was shot from the neck up, almost execution style, uh, in, basically in the head. Five people were killed, including a nine-year-old. You see him right there. Nine-year-old Daniel Enrique Lasso Guzman and his mother, Sonia, both of them murdered. The child's father says he called 911 five times to report the suspect shooting his gun. That was my nine-year-old son and my wife, too. And two people who died protecting my two and a half year old daughter. My one and a half month old son was protected with a lot of clothes so the killer wouldn't kill him too. Wow. The sheriff said his team got there as fast as they could, but said because the force is small and covers the county at large, the whole thing, Officers did not get there fast enough. Our chief law enforcement and intelligence analyst, John Miller, is with us now. It is so, so tragic. It's extraordinarily sad, and, and it's a sign of what we're seeing these days. I think it really is. Also, the fact that they cannot find this guy, they don't even know if he's in the country. Well, he's, he's from Mexico, has contacts in Mexico, is in Texas, could have fled to Mexico. You know, he did this terrible act and then um, fled into the woods near his home. Uh, they found clothes. So, you know, he's thinking there's going to be tracking dogs and bloodhounds. They found his phone. So he's anticipating that law enforcement would be looking for a signal. So this is someone who has some skills and, you know, they have a challenge. And what does that look like? I mean, they, they're offering this $80,000 reward. The fact that they can't find him, though, what else do they do? So that looks like a lot of things. You know, if you think back to the, the Olympic Park bomber who mm -hmm. fled into the Nantahala National Forest, Eric Robert Rudolph, 1997, he hid there for years undetected um, as a fugitive being sought for by hundreds, sometimes thousands of law enforcement people. But he planned every bombing carefully and he planned his escape carefully. This is a spontaneous incident out of anger and a spontaneous escape. There's no plan behind this except running. So given his resources and background, and given you've got the FBI involved, you've got the US Marshals, you've got the sheriff, you've got money on the street, you have uh, informants from the criminal world, you've got an $80,000 reward for the public. Mm -hmm. um, the complicating factor is if he made it into Mexico. Uh, not, not a game ender, complicating. You have zero leads, what do you do, John? You do one of two things. Uh, one, you could increase the reward, but if you have $80,000 and you have zero leads, it's probably not about the money. Um, it's about increasing community engagement. To get yeah. people to talk. Is and I mean, this is, if there was any case ever that should generate community engagement, um, <coughs> even in a community where people might be reluctant to talk to the police, this should be the deal breaker there. Yeah, it's just so concerning as we're seeing this bigger pattern of this snap aggression. And we'll have more on that, I know, to come. So keep us updated on, on how this investigation does progress. Will do.